if you have been in the Inu community since Gen 8, you will no doubt recognize the most team ever. This is what a, this is one of the teams of all time. And it's very iconic because it's horrible, but it's also incredible. And when I saw that Stories used it in her SS Cup Round 2 series versus Poe, I knew I was going to cover this game. This isn't even the first game of their series. I just, I believed that this team was so worthy of being shown first. Title, thumbnail, yada, yada, yada. I had to put it in the front. <laughs> there's you have any content as a like make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed if you are subscribed hey go, go press that like you can do it takes like two seconds let's get into it now so what what is so fun about this team well there there's combuskin there's spider i'm i feel like part of this team was built because during gen 8 there was an unironically high amount of gas not gas strong galvantula on the ladder nicknamed spider and so they're like, you know what? I need a spider. So this team is born. I think it is a, uh, it is cosmic power, Zatu, it's sword stand, so valley ghost, except it's trying to cosplay as a so valley ground. It's some weirdo like endure reversal weakness policy combuskin. Truly diabolical SD on the blade, and then the Arcanine I think's just like three attacks offensive. Meanwhile, Poe's team. You may notice there's not a ghost resist. And this is kind of tricky, and it's why I think in Gen 8 you really do need ghost checks. Not necessarily because of so Valley Ghost, but we've got a lot of annoying ghost types like Decidui, Delmize, even Golurk. And these mods are all pretty annoying to pivot around when you don't have sufficient counterplay. Now a lot of teams will decide, hey I've got a Pokemon that's itemless, you know we call it Polterproofing. And a lot of time you'll feel okay against the big three. Um, so Valley Ghost doesn't care, so you know what? If this Rotom Mo, for example, you could be itemless on that. It ain't gonna help you. And yeah, let's get into this game. So of course you gotta leave with Spider, and you have to nickname it Spider in all caps. If you don't, then you're you're missing the point. Power Gym doesn't matter. He's got Angela's Sash anyway, so it's gonna live. And throw off the thunder just for some yep. And now it is over. I'm kidding. And now the Zatu comes out, and like we said, it's cosmic power. It's also got a weakness policy. So, of course, if Poe chose to keep trying to attack, you you would just be making it stronger. And, of course, you know that trick's coming out, so you get in your sil Silvali ground. And the game has been won. <laughs> kind of. Um, The Wisp doesn't... The Wisp matters, but doesn't matter that much, right? You're still essentially at plus zero. And now a Sword Stance, again, is pretty free. Because Talonflame Bravebird isn't doing a ton anyway. And there is a lot of incentive from Poe to keep that Talonflame around. Like, this team is known. So... Stories knows Poe's probably going to want to keep that T-Flame around, not only for the Buskin, but also even the Arcanine. You've got Vapo, but it, it's better to have two checks and one. So, I know their SD is pretty free, and here we see a very nice sequence from Stories. Of course, the first multi-attack is always fair. Poe throws off the Wish, and here, because the Protect is so obvious, Stories does go for another multi-attack instead of Swords Dancing, because it's just unlikely to, that Protect is too free. And you're seeing the the issue <laughs> for Poe's team. He doesn't have anything that can really take on this Pokemon as it just continues to run roughshod all over his team. I believe the last move on this is Explosion. Shoutouts to um, Phantom for bringing his team and exploding on a Protect Snorlax. That made me really happy as the manager of his, him in the Snake Draft we had recently. But as you've seen, the Savali Ghost has claimed almost Poe's entire team. When Rotom Mo comes out, it does not die, but it may as well have died. <laughs> oh, so Valley Ghost. Wonderful Pokemon, wonderful Pokemon. As uh, someone calls Taga a very nice thing in chat. Very thoughtful. I'm not a bus can go sort of dance or dance. Unfortunately, that is not a viable play against a Silvalley Ground. The Arcanine will now come out. There's, I mean, there's not a, it's still a very awkward game for um stories to play from here. <laughs> um, so Valley Ground is actually incredibly hard for this team to face if you're not able to like chunk it randomly in an earlier stage because weak 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 all of those to multi-attack and then like zatu has to boost five bajillion times before he can actually do stuff versus a valley so we see here of course the blitz for a lot of chip but even through intimidate you still die so now you gotta go zatu and now you gotta play these annoying sequences versus the road of mo so cosmic power came out there just in the uh, off chance that the Savali went for a rock slide 
And now you have to stay in here to get rid of the road of Mo. The problem is this allows Escav in. And, you know, you're gonna go to Blade here. This actually ends up being banded damage, as we see here. The re I know 23 doesn't look like banded damage, but trust me. And then the Zatuk was back out. Does it mean there's not really another play you have? I mean, okay. The Zatu comes out, I think. I want to say Stories was seeing if it was not banded damage. I don't know if she calced it at the time, but because like t technically, no. <laughs> Give me a moment. I think honestly, you're just going back Zatu anyway because yeah, it it's better to throw Zatu out there than to keep the blade in there, especially after the defense drop. You have to reset. There you go. <laughs> you have to reset your defenses. So Zatu, you sack it here. It's never sweeping anyway. Because now Mr. DeBlade comes back out. And because we know this is Bandit Escav, you don't have to worry about a random knockoff costing you Revia Light. You also don't have to worry about this Escav while you're doing damage. <laughs> Razor Shell is truly one of the moves of all time. I think maybe you could have SD'd on the, um, this turn here. I think would have been fine. But Shadow Sneak, as you see, does KO the DeBlade. Off to game one, Nux. That was game two. And here we see another very offensive team. This is another pretty... I was going to say it's a pretty known team, but I was thinking about the Meteor Beam spam team. I think this is still a semi-often used team. But here we get to see Kingdra showcased on a team. Not a mon that you see a ton of in Sword and Shield in you anymore, but it's a very nice anti-meta option because of focus energy. So, as we talked about back when this generation was current gen, there was a lot of bulky water usage. As you've seen, both games Poe was brought up Vaporeon. And Kingdra capitalizes on this bulky water type spam very well. Sometimes it even earns substitute, and you just super stumped on them. But Focus Energy Kingdra is really good into all of the options. Gastrodon, Mantine, Vaporeon, obviously Quag. Because you Focus Energy up, and then Draco Meteor sends them into the sky. <laughs> you don't one-shot them, but you do... I mean, Vaporeon takes like almost 100. So if rocks are up, the Mon doesn't even tank it. And so, pretty cool to counter team a lot of the balances. Because even if you're facing like a Sylveon, it can be a little awkward for the Sylveon player. You gotta be careful with how low you let it get, because Surf, after a focus energy, it, it is very vulnerable to getting popped as well. So, as we look at this game, I mean, Kingdra does look quite strong. You beat up on most of this team, and you also got mons like Talonflame that just... Seed you free setup. Even stack attack it kind of seeds you a bit of free setup too. And the game plan will be simple. Lead Aurorus, get your stealth rock up and just play it out from here. So Poe does U turn because I mean, you, you can't risk the Aurorus being focus ash there. You always got to switch into your stack attack. -a. And then you also always have to let stack attack -a die to earth power here. Yeah, I. <laughs> Switching there is still equally kind of difficult, and it's not necessarily confirmed whether or not the Aurorus will be Earth Power. You can run, like, Stealth Rock, Blizzard, Freeze Dry, and then Encore even, or Thunder Wave. There's a lot of move slot versatility, so... Basically, he gambled and he, you know, he... What, I don't, what What's the bad result in gambling? He lost all his money? The house won? Something like that. <laughs> he gambled and he was wrong. It happens... Once again, though, we see a Ground Valley pivot on the Aurorus. And now the Rotom Mo goes for its least from pick off the, Ro the Aurorus, and Poe has lost the game because now the Kingdra gets to come <laughs> Now the Kingdra gets to come out, and as you see, Rotom Mo is not doing damage anymore. This is very, very, very free setup. And he is. Be... Tonki got the fabled two turn setup for free. And you see the Draco chip there. Very nice. We also see Poe is not toxic on his Vaporeon. Toxic Vapo is actually kind of uncommon in Gen 8 compared to Gen 7 where it is the most common variant. Heal Bell just feels a lot more worthy of a slot in this gen. It just feels like Vaporeon counterplay a lot of the time comes down to Toxic. Vaporeon also ends up trading Toxic a lot of the time in this format. And so you end up really, really valuing Heal Bell. So... All that to say is Kingdra has, in fact, super smashed a standard balance build. Just is what it is. I mean, sometimes you queue into a game and you get Kingdra. It is, it is a veritably good Pokemon. 
on our next series today, we got Dugza versus Zeebin. And when I tell you some of the Zeebin teams are a little cracked with it, I mean a little cracked with it. They don't actually look that out there, especially these two teams here. They're literally the same Pokemon just about, but with the different wall breaker and in a different water type. Well, and a different uh, electric type, I guess. Something like that. Y'all know what I'm going for. Leave me alone. <laughs> but we'll start with game one here. As this, also, I just want to talk about this Scrafty. This ends up being Intimidate Rest Talk. And for a while, I've been trying to think about what the point is over Guzzlord. I feel like it makes more sense once we start watching the game, but I will talk about that more. Firm preview, though. Grimmsnarl has potential this game. The problem is you still have to get through both a Vileplume and a Diancy. But, I mean, when you've got Salazzle, it is pretty possible. Lazzle is pretty good at forcing chip onto Diancy. There are two potential switchings, but Mantine can always get pretty easily pressured as well by outside sources like potential Toxics, potential Tricks, even from Rotom Mo if the Mantine wants to try and be a little greedy with, you know, coming in on, like, a utility move or coming in on Leaf Storm instead. Stuff like that. But I would say the route this game for Dugza mostly is just going for Nasty Plot Salazzle stuff. And Team Rimzibin is really, really slow. And so Lazzle's going to have a lot of agency. Agency, agency. In this game, just through that alone. You get pretty free switchings as well in the Vileplume. And you're pretty good at drawing out Vileplume with the Rotom Mo. Because you know this is Scarf Togue, meaning it doesn't take Leaf Storm very well. Meaning he's probably not going to keep going it versus the Rotom Mo. So definitely you're going to get that good Salazzle positioning, so it's really just going to be one of those types of games. And I forget which one of these battles it is, but I think it's this one, where I'm going to have to skip like 50 turns at some point. You'll see why. So, when I saw Intimidate Scrafty, now we've seen this before a couple of times. Not this set. We've seen Intimidate Scrafty some on Choice Band. So you can run like, it. a lot of the other abilities aren't like overly useful for Banded. Moxie isn't really that good, because... I mean, on Band, who cares if you have Moxie? You don't need to snowball games like that. And Jet Skin's fine, but Intimidate's just kind of nice because it gives you even more turns to come in and break. So, originally, I thought it was Banded, maybe. But, um, how I was wrong. Because you see this not- that is not- there's no Banded Scrafty. <laughs> so, I saw this and I'm like, oh, it has Intimidate and not Band. Okay, is it Assault Vest? That was running through my mind at this point. It, nope, there's leftovers. Okay. Uh, no, it rested. Interesting. Rest Intimidate. And, and I'm just unsure what to think. Maybe he chose the wrong, you know, maybe he just had the wrong ability. No. No, no. This was intentional. So Rest Talk, kind of interesting. Because this ends up being kind of like Guzzlord in function. You even share a lot of the weaknesses, which is fun. But I think the difference is Scrafty has a little bit better speed, and that might end up making some matchup better. As admittedly, I was trying to figure out what the point was, and I was struggling. Now, Guzzlord, I believe, is naturally slower than Delmize. If I'm remembering, I think Guz is 44 base speed, Delma is 45. So that's kind of valuable. You don't have to EV at all for speed to just naturally outrun Delm. And this is a kind of team where you might see the Scrafty be relied on to check Delmize a little bit, because Plume otherwise is your answer, and um, like I said, this Vile Plume will be revealed to be a little bit silly later on. So I feel like maybe it was partly for something like that, just having the extra speed advantage, meaning you can allocate more EVs into your other stats, whether that's bulk, whether that's even maybe attack if you want a bit more damage. You're also, like, not necessarily weaker than Guz. Guzzlord has, like, 101 base attack. Scrafty, I know, is 95. But since you have high jump kick, that kind of makes up for the drop in attack. I don't know. Intimidate also probably just helps you, like, stave off various physical attackers, right? Like the Silvallies. If you're pivoting properly, you might be able to throw off Intimidates here and there. So you ever seen a Token Amari successfully Volt Block? You won't be able to see this a ton. And you also see Dugza properly analyze it. Hey! <laughs> There's not thinking you really do to threaten me, or so let me just stay in and bolt again. And as we said, this Salazzle's a problem. And now the Mantang comes out, has to always run the risk of getting poisoned. Also took 43. So this is either not a very bulky Mantine, or 
it has... It's probably just mostly physically defensive. <laughs> I don't remember my SS calcs, but still. So Zatu now comes out, potentially threatens some chip with the helmet. As the Mantine will now come back out. You're thinking maybe a fog here. Maybe it just goes for roost. So you can just always bring back out the Rotom Mo. It is very free. And once again, you have to see these mid-grounds with Plume Taken, which just continue to see turns for Mr. Lazzle. Or Mrs. Lazzle, I mean. You can't have a Mr. Lazzle. Those don't exist. And then we see a nice little corrosion poison from the Lazzle. Very nicely done. And here, I... This is where I got very confused. Because... Give me a moment. Let's look at this. I want y'all to see this calc. I should have kept the um tab open. But here is a Vile Plume versus a plus zero Salazzle. That's Sludge Wave. Here's Sludge Bomb. This is a max HP Vile Plume. 41 about to 48. Why did I do 54? Why did why, why? I don't even think it's um. Where is the item? I don't even think it was Poison Barb. Okay, it actually technically could be Poison Barb. Oh, that's another game. But I don't think this is. I'm pretty sure you're just Boots Lazzle. So, this is where I'm almost wondering. Is he running Intimidate Scrafty because he's not fully bulky Vile Plume? I feel like this Vile Plume does not have max HP. This is why I, I just don't believe that this is Poison Barb. But maybe it is. Give me a moment. Alright, so I've calced, like, several things now at this point. Part of me's wondering, is this Spec Salazzle then? And was that Specially Defensive Vile Plume? No, that doesn't even... That doesn't end up working. I guess it could be not fully Specially Defensive. What if it's like one of those 16 plus types? Maybe? No, because it was getting lower rolls. I have no clue. But I calced on Mantine and Diancy as well. And they were taking way too much damage. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember what this Salazzle is. It might nasty plot later in the game. I truly don't recall. Anyhow. Diancy. Diamond Storms into Gastron. A little Earth Power comes out here. He drops on my B, because if that Diamond Storm connected, this Salazzle was gone, and this game became much easier. And this is where we now get to start skipping. Because, as you see, this team, unless he gets Grimmsnarl in, it doesn't really, um, have the best of times. And he doesn't really want to go Grim yet, because the Schnarler can win this. Okay, we don't have to skip yet. The Schnarler can win this game very, very effectively now that the Plume's gone. So he's going to kind of preserve it, I would say, maybe to his detriment as he dodges a focus there. That potentially was really huge if that was, like, Specs Magmortar. But he's going to keep that Grim in the back, not wanting to risk, you know, getting high jump kicked in the face and getting cooked. But it means he doesn't really have a great way of bringing anything into Scrappy. Like, you can go, um, Lazzle. But Knockoff might KO you from this range. Again, I don't know the EVs on this Scrafty. I'm not going to pretend to know how Z-Ben EV'd anything on his team. I'm not going to pretend to know how Dugs has got that Salazzle set up. <laughs> and so as a result, we're about to see Dugs for like 50 turns. Just switch between Zatu and Gastrodon. And try his best to stall this out. So I'm just going to do this. Y'all aren't interested in this. Don't lie. A, 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 a Diancy came out to greed for some lefties, by the way. Incredible play. 6% there is huge. So, yeah, da, 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 da. I mean, again, there's nothing to take from this. It is just a matter of trying to PowerPoint stall. Eventually, a Rotom Mo switch happens. That was pretty cool. I remember watching this, by the way. And every time this went to sleep, I was just hoping to God that Dugza would go the Grim Snarl instead. Like right there, when you know he's probably going to go for rest, just please go Grim. And you see Leaf Storm there, because there's it, some 50 50s on whether he'll stay in. Because you don't, if this gets tricked, it's pretty over. So Leaf Storm there, potentially just to smoke the Togodomaru. Doesn't end up working though. So you'll see that get played to a couple times. So again, the Rotomo comes out, knowing it's going to rest. Once again, I just wish this came out, but I believe Magmortar tanks one hit, so that's why you see it kept in the back. And again, another very, very timely crit 
for Dugza. As Arage will come back out. As the Scrafty will now. No, Magmortar. So the Magmortar will come back out. Gastron's still not in um necessarily a great range. Again, if this is Specs Magmortar, the uh, Gastro is two shot. So it can't go into it there. So Arage sacks better because it doesn't really do a lot for you. As the Lazzle now comes out. Flamethrower does a pretty good chunk to Mortar. And Magmortar just cooks it. So we never got to see. Again, I I don't know if that is Specs damage. I, really, I truly don't. But once again, we will skip because this is just uninteresting. Zerotomo once again will come out. We continue to see Doug's a play to getting this trick. Once he gets the trick, it is pretty over. As he ends up tricking the Deancey, so it doesn't work. But he gets some lefties, which is pretty good too. Leaf Storm there just in case the Toad wants to green. Now you can just go Toad if you're Z-Ben. Just U-turn. Or you go Mag Porter. That, that's actually a little bit better. <laughs> but Gastron now comes out. And you see what I was talking about earlier. Um, yeah, Gastrodon was just about in range of getting outright KO'd. Next Mag Mortar is a threat. Do not mess around with him. So Scrafty, once again, will come back out. I mean, it's like your only thing to really try and play into Rotomo. And unfortunately, let Grim in. And with the chip on Mag Mortar, Mr. Schnarler will have his way with the rest of Zubin's team. Lariat, whoosh, that's one. Togodomaru, whoosh, that's two. Mag Mortar, oh, that's three. Do you think Scrafty's taking a player off? What do you think this is? What do you think that you think this is Gen Nine work in Terra? No, that's four. Nice old Grim Snarl sweep, reminiscent of earlier SV in you, except no Terra needed, no Terra to be had. So now we get game two, and Zben once again has some very exotic Pokemon. I'm not even sure these are original teams, by the way, because like they kind of look familiar to me. So I feel like I should know the sets. All I know is from looking at Zubin's team at preview, I hated it. And it's mostly because it's slow. It's just very, very slow. Whimsicott, unless it's Scarf Rotom Fan, right? Whimsicott is your fastest mon, and it is... Odds are, it is a utility set. Because that is what Whimsicott runs in this format. Meaning, yeah, that's not speed control. <laughs> that does not count. That is not damage. So I really don't like the matchup in general. It is a... Being okay. Kish here because you know this team from Dugs is also pretty slow. But once again we see a Salazzle where its speed is completely uncontested. And your only mon to come in versus Lazzle is kinda Guzzlord? Kinda Mudsdale? The the caveat is you have AV Raj, which can force very awkward trades with Lazzle, because Lazzle's not one-shotting you through the AV. Maybe you're assault, not assault vest, god. Maybe you're specially defensive on the horse? It is, it's just very nasty Salazzle matchup. And again, we see the whole synergy of pivot into Lazzle being really good, because Simeon's going to draw in mods like Rotom Fan, where Lazzle's really good into, or Whimsicott, where Lazzle's really good into. Just, I, I don't know how you win this game if you're Zeban. But Mudsdale's led with versus the Lurk. The Lurk has to switch, because he is not doing damage. It's also... Probably ticks you onto it not being banded. Because if you're banded Golurk, you can 110% just go for damage there. A switch is still reasonable if you don't want to play around the um the checks, but it is what it is. Free scald there though, into Stackamus, Tackamus. We see the Volt switch here, which just lets Muds in. Now, the nice thing here that Dugza decides to do is know that Mudsdale is never staying in. So, Rotom Fan tried to be brought in against a Mantide Switch. He gets a Poison on this. This is really useful long-term, because it just makes Passimian doing stuff even easier. As you see, Zbin's team doesn't really have a great switch into CC. You have a lot, but they're not super durable. So, Zard comes out there, and we know how Zbin likes to build. There is always a Breaker, a very strong and scary Breaker. So, this game it is a Spex Charizard. Does pretty respectable chip to Mantine. Gonna hope to see those be Hurricanes later on, though. Because now the Whimsicott comes out, and like we said, it is a utility set with leftovers at Encore, so you're able to just lock that into a move. You turn on Staka, and probably just throw Horsh out here. Guzzlord is fine, too. I've watched this game before, I just don't remember everything, because there's a lot of turns. <laughs> Guzzlord comes out, they're off a of Dark Pulse here. I don't think that's Specs damage, but maybe it is, and I'm just delusional. Anyhow, Rosh is brought out now. Because it's a pretty general fine mid-ground. Unfortunately, it means you lose your AV, but we have confirmation on Doug's side that he is a leftovers guz, so it could be like rest talk, it could be protect toxic, 
It could even be like protect three attacks. There's a lot of things going on with the Gizzy. The Glizzy Gobbler. <laughs> so that a horse is brought in off the U-turn. And horse is pretty decent here. You have a Mantine is always a free switch in, but again, it's always a little awkward with the Rotom fan potentially coming out. And the horse even has Rock Slide. So does some decent chip to Mantine. And again, Whimsicott can always come out, threaten the Encore, threaten the U-turn. This time instead it Encore locks the Mantine into a Scald, which is pretty reasonable. And once again, we see the U-turn, so we're just going to continuously see Dugza get momentum looped into Oblivion. As the Glizzy Gobbler comes back out once again, this time Dark Pulse connects on Staka. We actually see the Stack Attack a sacked here. He Stack a Sack at the Stack Attack, meaning that now Guzzler's pretty scary. It's not a Draco check, really. So, gonna be hard for Dugza to play around that. Whimsicott got Sack on the CC because he may as well Sack them on. That's gonna do nothing anyway. And I feel most of Whimsicott's purpose has been fulfilled. Maybe he liked to keep it around for a Mantine, but it was just gonna be so low. It was. Yeah, I mean, I think it was going to die to a Scald. <laughs> so Rotom Fan comes out, gets away with a Defog, potentially sets your rocks back up later if you're Zeban. You've won the Hazards War. As now Raj is sacked to a Dynamic Punch. Very dynamic of him. His Charizard comes out. And we see this Golurk take absolutely nothing. Super smoke that Charizard's pack. It didn't die. But we see it as Spec Zard, and this also is AV Lurk. So, taking that hit very well, puts the Charizard in range of Slazzle Sludge Bomb and Pasumian ZC. Both of which are very nice to have met as we see CC come out because, again, you're trying to play to the close combat endgame at this point because both of these mons are not really going to keep taking those very well. So, it's the best win con for Dugza here. As he now goes Guz, we see the rare three attacks Mudsdale. Very, very funny. And this could definitely just greed for Stealth Rock now, too, which is pretty nice. They're not, like, necessary, but, I mean, you have no reason not to set the rocks, right? And he just body presses the Lord Guzzington. You can just double EQ now to get rid of this mon. And you're never going to actually lose in this 1v1 at this point with how little the knockoffs are doing. And, of course, you'll get more stamina. So, I'm just going <laughs> to skip ahead to where that mon's dead. This Lazlo is a revenge killer of choice. And now we see Glaz. Glaws. I can't even say what I want to say with this mod half the time. We see Guzzlord sack there into the... No, the Golurk sack there into the Guzzlord Draco. As Pissimian comes back out, you can always just CC here. U-turn there is probably also okay. The problem is, is it, they stay in. Um, your Salazzle is dead, and you definitely lose. So, not very good. The Rotom Fan comes out here, though. We see a CC into a Volt turn. Not very good. The problem here was this was kind of just always lost. I think maybe the play was to go Lazzle, though. I don't actually think it was always lost. As you, you get the KO here. Okay, I am doing the wrong stuff. I think you have to try going Lazzle, because you, know, you do live Volt Switch. The problem is... Again, I think it was kind of always lost. Because this isn't going to die to Sludge Bomb from Salazzle. And so you're still going to be forced into going for CC spam with Passimian at the end. So it, it really didn't matter. I think no matter what, at the end, you were going to see Rotom Fan go for a Volt Switch on Passimian and KO it. And as we see here, even with a crit, you weren't able to actually do enough damage to the Guzzlord. So Zeban takes game two. And then like we said at the beginning, in game three, Zeban has a very, very similar team to his game one build. Whereas Dugza has brought double Lizard. The Nasty Lizard core continues to thrive in this metagame, and in this matchup, um, please, show me the Toxicroak answer. I would love to hear how you think Zeban beats a Croak. This, like, this build is inexcusably bad in the Toxicroak. I don't want to say inexcusable because Croak's an incredible Pokemon, so you're gonna, you're bound to wind up a little shaky into it sometimes. Like, dear god. The counterplay to this, and keep in mind, look at this team. This is the only possible Defogger, so if it's Defog Talonflame... It is dropping one of Will-O-Wisp and U-Turn. So if this is not Will-O-Wisp Talonflame, your counterplay to Croak is hoping you are never in range of plus two Sucker Punch, and God forbid if you are, you better be Flame Body Burning. Because again, we have every game, we have had Dugza have the wonderful pivot, not Rotom Mo every game. Well, okay. Both of the games where he's been in a really dominant position, I would say, from matchup. 
I don't know if he was in a dominant position here, but we've seen two times where he had Rotom Mo and Vileplume Abuser. And dear God, is this Vileplume going to be able to draw, be drawn in? <laughs> Rotom Mo is really, really scary this game. There's not really a good mid ground anywhere other than the plume. Scrafty, once again, you don't want to get tricked. And you just... God, the positioning, man. The positioning! Let's see how it happens. Can he, with, can he outplay the Croak? So, Inteleon led versus Dura. He switches just in case it's Scarf. Because, again, there's nothing on this team that really could be Scarf otherwise. And again, we see, once again, he's been kind of rolling with um, a pretty slow build. Once again, though, it, it, it's just a breaker. So, Specs Duralid on there. His stack attack is allowed to get the Raka Raka Uppa Uppa. Now, here you get a free Toxic. Because, again, you know Tifa probably... You're pretty fine with Toxic always here anyway, because if you get Wisp, it's not the end of the world. You have Heal Bell, Sylveon. Plus, it lets you scout out whether the Talon is Will-O-Wisp, for example, or not. Because you know it's Defog, you know it's Roost. You know it's got an attack. So, it's good for knowledge. And now you see the U-turn. So, I will once again point you in the direction of the Toxic Croak matchup. Please. I implore you. Tell me how Zubin beats this Croak. I'd love to hear it. I'm I, I, any and all suggestions are welcome because I just don't see it. Now the wish from Sylveon just means you get to throw off a moon blast. And once again, Doug's a, he's just critting the ever living heck out of Zebin. This is what happens though. Zebin brought back the game one team essentially, and now he's just getting packed up by crits. Because just like what happened in game one, crit, 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 crit. And now the croak just, gosh, he was a lot of hard switching to croak as the Vile Bloom. A little bit interestingly went for synthesis. I'm not entirely sure what that achieved, but. A lot of gunk shot on Talon. What's really funny, if you want it to be incredibly ballsy, you could have gunked again there. It's not a good play. You don't have any reason to sack the crook, but you could have done it. <laughs> again, I mean, it's just never worth it, right? And yeah, trick on the lantern, very nicely done. Even if you had tricked the plume, it's not the end of the world. But tricking lantern's nice because it'll mean now you get free volts for the rest of the game. You just get to switch here even in the Inteleon. I would have gone croak, but... It is what it is. Croak, just because you can get to force the issue of setup. Because now he goes for a nice little U-turn. You can even bring Croak back out here, or Sylveon. Either's good. Sylveon just means you get another free Moon Blast. And free Chip is free Chip. And if it draws in the Bile Plume, then once again, we must reference... <laughs> we must reference Team Preview. So, anytime this happens, you're pretty happy. I, I still think you could play this a little more aggressively. But with how dominant of a matchup you have, it's pretty unnecessary. So now we just see the SD, and that crit's actually kind of annoying, but not that big a deal. The plume, I mean, you can now Lantern Sack, and this is a very nice play from Dugza here. To go for another Swords Dance, this means Talon is for sure in range of Sucker. I don't know if it already was at 67. Life Orb Sucker Punch has obviously a much better KO threshold. I think you... I almost want to say you do like 90 maximum at plus 2? I don't remember though. Anyhow, it's in KO range now. And you can always sucker because at plus three or plus four, you definitely will KO. No flame body happens there. And now we see actually a pretty good play from Zebin here. It's really all he's got. If he goes Dura to force the drain punch out and he tries to get some effect spore going. I think he does misplay the second turn though. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's pretty awful here anyway for him, so I don't really <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything bad about that play, right? But Maybe you go Dura again and then pivot back, but do you have enough assets to win the game from there? I think it's pretty unlikely. I think Inteleon probably packed you from there. And if you lose the Vile Plume anyway to doing that, I believe you lose the game as well. So I think what he was going for there is just a miss to maybe synthesis and then play it out. So, pretty fair route. Yeah, some good old Gen 8 NU. It's been over a year over a year over two years i think over a year since i last did some gen 8 yeah because i remember i came back to youtube in like late january and that was when we were finishing up gen 8 being the current gen for nu i remember uploading a paparaja video of some kind i don't know if it was a showcase i don't know if it was a tournament video i don't know what it was but it had a raj thumbnail and yeah been daily uploading now for well over a year thank you all for watching though shout outs to the most team ever here I'll see y'all next time. Peace.